Hello, my soccer universe. Well, time for another recap of the weekend. I'm gonna do this a teeny bit shorter. A, I'm a little bit short on time. B, stuff happened, but not that stuff happened. I mean, uh, there are two headlines. The first one is, and that's why I'm Barcelona, that, yeah, Barcelona, despite having the worst start in ages, is still top of the league. Um, and that Liverpool's winning streak is snapped. And then there's another one, uh, but I keep this for towards the end of the video. Uh, the other big winner of the weekend to me is Dortmund. I don't have a jersey for Dortmund, but I think if I had, I probably would wear a Dortmund jersey right now because uh, they probably had the most impactful win this weekend. But let's start out in La Liga and very briefly run through the results, I mean, we already talked about the Saturday, Saturday the results where the big three were playing uh, Barcelona win, Atletico Valencia a draw, and Mallorca beats Real Madrid. Real Madrid with the second string squad is still rather poor showing by them. Granada uh, also with the win against Osasuna is staying up there. Uh, a team worth watching, and I have not watched except for the first game of the season, but I probably will make now a point of the Real Sociedad uh, is also moving in there and is a really fun team to watch. You get a 3 1 win over Betis. Uh, Athletic Club doesn't get off kind of to a better start. I mean, 1-1 one, one against Valladolid is a so-and-so result in Sevilla. Luc de Jong scores, makes it 1-0 against uh, Levante. So Sevilla is also staying in there on top of the table. As I said, Barcelona is now uh, there. Real Madrid second. I think this is another point. I mean, we would have the Classical this weekend. It got postponed. I'm somewhere in between those, those I think I would have loved to see a classical day this weekend because we really need kind of this big result. Uh, but if there was a classical, this would be the time where Barcelona could separate themselves from the rest. Yeah, I still think there's a danger there. Now we have we are running in danger. If we, should Granada get a win, they might overtake both of these. So, you know, they, we, will, we, will, we will get a little bit an uneven table come the next match day. But, you know, Granada and Real Sociedad are in there. Atletico Madrid. Atletico is such a frustrating team um, to watch because they could play very offensively, but... I think it's in Simeone to hold back a little bit. Sevilla, similar for us, frustrating. Um, Valencia also a 10th. Um, not all that great yet. Let's see how they might they go in. And when we look towards the bottom of the table, it's uh, Betis, Espanyol, Leganes. Uh, Leganes is the one that's in Espanyol, also the ones that are truly in trouble. The rest, you know, it's kind of close together, especially with Real Mallorca. Now getting a little bit out of, with a, just a win. Moving on to the Premier League, we had a big result yesterday evening uh, with Sheffield United managing a win over Arsenal, which was not entirely undeserved either, because Arsenal basically forgot playing in the first half. Um, other than that, um, I said it already in my roundup video, Chelsea's win over Newcastle is uh, puts them in the top four. Uh, it remains Leicester City gets a win uh, rather luckily, but in the end they get it. Uh, City can close the gap to Liverpool, of course, Liverpool with a very disappointing performance, only manages a 1-1 uh, against uh, United, and they still cannot win at Old Trafford. Arsenal now falls out of the top four. So yeah, Chelsea moves in, Arsenal out. So uh, we have that in uh, England, Spurs are the team that actually worries me most because they really do not look good and uh, they picked up some points but I really am afraid that Spurs might not make Europe this um, year. Let's see, maybe change of manager, I don't know, uh, it remains to see, they, uh, but they look downright awful. Top of the table, Liverpool, now six points instead of eight still. Uh, it's almost nah, six points if two wins by Manchester City and they win out Manchester City would actually uh, uh, overtake Liverpool so uh, maybe it swings now slightly in the favor of City uh, Leicester and Chelsea 17 seem to be like the next two teams because Arsenal is very inconsistent I always fall, felt when they were so high up that uh, it's kind of a little bit of a fluke as I said Spurs even moves up I don't get that. Um, and down we have Manchester United 9, 14th is 
uh, Everton also 15 uh, and the bottom is Newcastle, Norwich and Watford but you know I think lots to be played still there uh, it can change quickly but yeah Watford uh, is probably the team that I would say is in most trouble in the Bundesliga um, the big story is how tight the race is and I, I will show you the table in just a second we have now Frankfurt beating Leverkusen it's, it's seemingly no one wants to have top spot Frankfurt beating Leverkusen um, Augsburg managing a late draw against Bayern was a huge story Leipzig and Wolfsburg uh, Wolfsburg does not go down easily Dortmund with a huge win over Gladbach and as we will see Gladbach still remains top of the table because Hoffenheim beats Schalke Schalke cannot find a goal uh, it's frustratingly Schalke like honestly um, Kern also um, gets another win over Paderborn which basically catapults them so we'll see out of uh, the trouble for now so in the table look at the top half nine teams that's half the league within two points Gladbach, Wolfsburg, Bayern, Dortmund, 16, 15, 15, Leipzig also 15, and then a huge uh, with 14 points. Freiburg, Schalke, Frankfurt, Leverkusen. It is absolutely insane how tight it is, but it's also um, who wants it. And as I said, this win by Dortmund catapults them right back into title contention. Maybe this was the, the spark that they needed to really get something going. Um, then there's a little drop off with Hertha, Hoffenheim, uh, Werder, Düsseldorf, uh, Union and Köln now at 7. Uh, this is really already a relegation zone where Augsburg now slides in despite getting a draw. This is how crazy Bundesliga is. Mainz also slides in and Paderborn is still with only one point. Serie A, very much a two-horse race. We had the crazy game Lazio Atalanta. Atalanta squandering a 3-0 lead at the half. Uh, Napoli Juve getting wins. Uh, Inter gets a win against Sassol that is way more comfortable than actually the result looks with 4-3. I think they were 4-1 up. Something like that. Also, uh, Lukaku was about to take a penalty to make it 3-1 and um, someone parachuted into the stadium. So, also uh, notable. Cagliari is becoming a team to watch because uh, they are getting another win. 2-0 against Spal, where Sampdoria and Roma. I mean, that that was a Roma game. You had uh, Sampdoria, who already had Di Francesco, the uh, former Roma coach, um, being fired and replaced with Ranieri, same sequence as we happened uh, at Roma last season, and now they play Roma. It's nil nil. It was not a good game. Udine gets a win against Torino. Um, Milan. Lecce was a 2-2 Parma, 5-1 over Genoa, really means that Genoa is in trouble. And Brescia Fiorentina ends in a really nil, nil, uh, didn't see highlights there. As I said in the table, two horse race, Juve, Inter, then the drop. And then it's actually relatively tight, Atalanta 17, Napoli 16. Cal yeah, still. And then Cagliari 14, 13, uh, the 13 and 12, the two Rome clubs. Parma also with 12, Fiorentina with 12. They should probably have gotten a win yesterday. And I think... As a Milan fan, I'm saying, yeah, it's only six points to a uh, fourth spot. Yes, it could have been only only four if you get the friggin' win. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of still a broad midfield uh, towards the bottom. It's also kind of tight, to be honest. Uh, when I see Bologna, Hellas, Brescia, Lecce, Sassolo, Spal, Genoas and Sampdoria, I mean, that's only five points. And six points, you're in midfield where Udin and Milan and, uh, Udin and, Milan and Torino are. So, yeah, also kind of tightish. Uh, really tight, except on the top, is Ligue 1. That has to be said. We had uh, PSG winning 4 1 at Nice, and then with Nantes losing against Metz means that uh, PSG is really separating self, themselves. Lyon stays in trouble, nil league uh, against Dijon. Um, to lose wins over Lille, so that's the other Champions League team. Uh, crazy results, I think, also on Sunday. I mean, Saint Etienne wins over Bordeaux, Monaco now suddenly gets a win streak going 3 2 over Rennes, and Rennes is free fall. And Marseille is probably a team that could move in the upper uh, echelons. Uh, Reims is also surprisingly stable with a 1 0 win over Montpellier. So, if we look at the table, it's Paris Saint Germain and then the rest. Uh, Nantes still remains second. Reims uh, is now the new third place team in Marseille. 
uh, also moves up um, in fourth Angers now with a second loss is now only in fifth Bordeaux also drops out there as does little Montpellier um, and if we look now towards the bottom which to me is really in, 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 in interesting that uh, we have um, Rennes, Amiens, uh, Monaco, Toulouse 12, Metz 11 and Lyon is down there 10, Nîmes 10, Dijon 9, Strasbourg 9, 9 points and you're last in the table. That's in no other of the big leagues the case. So uh, towards the bottom, Liga is very tight and it could really happen to anyone at the moment here. It's really super, super, super tight. Only the top, PSG separates from the frame from top, but between... Um, fourth and 20th are only five points and that's not a whole lot i mean i cannot make any pattern in france this year um since i call it i want to go to the area divisie where the first big boy was cracking and that is psv losing three nil away to utrecht utrecht getting a goal early in the second half then two red cards help them and then it scores two more with that um, Arn Vitesse can draw level with PSV at 23 and Ajax gets a 2-1 win at Valweig and are now solitary leader uh, we have of course Feyenoord only getting a 1-1 Feyenoord also not looking good at all and finally talked already about that uh, but I tell you that Austria is where I will end it now. You will always get Austria in there. My last, that was probably the other big result of the weekend, is the big winner with 7-2 over Mattersburg. Finally, they score goals. I told you at length about it. Um, with Salzburg dropping points at Sturm Graz on the horrible playing field and Wolfsburg dropping points at Rapid and just this sentence in, in itself is crazy to me. Uh, we have now three points uh, between Salzburg and Lask and between Lask and Wolfsburg. Then Rapid is hanging in there, having actually a decent season, maybe not playing in Europe does help them. Um, and with Hartberg's win over Tirol, uh, we can actually say the Sturm Graz and Hartberg, the two Styrian teams, uh, that's the top half because also Austria, Wien, they're similarly bad as I would say Feyenoord and um, um, Manchester United, Milan and so on. They just, they want to play philosophy, they don't have the players for it. It's a mess. Uh, they throw away a win at St. Burton and now it's three points difference between them and the top six, which will be in the championship playoff. As you know, we are now at half time. Points will be halved after uh, 22 rounds and then the top six play for championship and the bottom six uh, play for relegation and one solitary European spot via a crazy playoff system. So that was that. I um, hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Champions League is coming tonight. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.